Good morning, San Francisco. Welcome in to another NFL mock draft. In this video, I am joined with my buddies over here. We got Tyler Moss and Danny with the bald guy and the fantasy football counselor. Shout out to them. So in this video, we are all going to be picking all 32 picks of the first round of the NFL draft. Now, obviously, some things have changed since I last did an NFL mock draft. That is probably just <laughs> outdate, as outdated as it gets because it's completely changed now. But let's get right into it. The first pick of the draft, the Cincinnati Bungles are on the board. And it is obviously very clear here that they are going to be picking Justin Herbert. Just kidding. Joe Burrow. <laughs> uh, uh, so, Okay. Real quick, I think Burrow's kind of a chalk pick here, but there is um, some speculation that they may move down. It is the Bengals, however, um, so we're expecting them to to pull some bullshit move like that. So um, don't be too surprised if they trade out, but if they stay put, they're going with Joe Burrow here. Yeah, there, right. there's reports that Miami is looking to get that first pick. How true is that? I have no idea, but that's what I was reading. You can go, Danny. Yeah, uh, yeah no, Burrow here is the clear pick. I mean, he's coming off a 60-touchdown season won the national championship, won the Heisman. I mean, like, if you watch his game film from this year, there's no real flaws in his game. I mean, he just had probably the best season of a college quarterback in the history of college football. So, I mean, it's really a no-brainer here. You got the number one pick. You got to need a quarterback. Get rid of the red rifle. Burrow's your guy. Exactly. You got to pick Burrow. Throw Andy Dalton to the Patriots. Pick Burrow here. In fact, I don't know what the hell. Where did he go? You got to slide up. Oh, you got to slide up there, bud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is my fucking bad, Bush bad. League here. Okay. It's this... fucking falling apart over here. What a fucking... Okay. So the second the... pick of the draft is the Washington Redskins. Danny. So I got the second pick here. I mean, we c- I've heard reports we could see a Kyler situation here in the sense that, like, if they're not fully committed to uh, Haskins, being, Haskins being able to take to it here, I just I, – I, in a mock draft, especially at this point, I just would have a hard time not – chalking and chasing on here simply because of the the generational talent like me personally here if i'm drafting for the skins i'm drafting tua simply because i chase the upgrade at quarterback whenever i have the opportunity and i'm just not a huge fan of haskins in general so i mean you got a potential generational quarterback here in tua i personally would take him but i mean we're mocking this in terms of like what we think is going to happen at this point like you still have haskins on the roster uh chase young is a generational pass rusher again i mean like this this guy's literally freaking khalil mack like if you've ever seen him play he's just ridiculous and uh they can definitely use another young edge rusher to compliment so i mean you stick him on the other side of montez sweat i mean brian kerrigan's 30 plus years old now like it's just a no-brainer for me uh like in terms of like what i think is going to happen now i'd like to see what you guys think is going to happen but yeah, I mean, I think Chase Young's going to be the pick here at this point from what we know. Yeah, I like Chase Young here. Um, I, I think that's that's the pick as of right now uh, with everything going on. I think that's the pick for the Redskins here. Um, on the off chance they do go to, uh, I just want to kind of lay out who's going to be most affected here. I think the Chargers will be. I think the Dolphins will still grab a quarterback. I don't think they're too, um, they're too set on either Tua or Herbert. They've had – Really good talks with Herbert, but they still like what two is able to do. So I don't think they'll be as affected. I think they'll take either one of them. But I think a team like the Chargers, if the Redskins were to go quarterback here, would be looking to take oh. the Giants or the Lions pick. Um, 100%. It, it's yeah, just they have to. On the way out of it. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I completely agree. I mean, Chase Young, to most people, is the best pick in the draft, like best talent overall wise so when he falls to two you obviously have to pick a guy like Chase Young here a guy that was excellent in college and should be excellent on the garbage Washington Redskins I mean I could see why they'd want to get rid of Haskins if I'm being honest with you because Haskins really is not that good but then rest in peace to Tua's career if he goes there because their line is like god awful it splits like the Red Sea and you're just done for I mean this is what I my input personally as a Cowboys fan I would personally much rather them draft Chase Young than Tua simply because I think just I'm not scared of Haskins in the division. I just don't think he's going to have the potential to be a, a top 10 guy. Whereas I can definitely see it happening with Tua. And I mean, as good of an edge rusher as you can be, just look at Chicago. If you don't have the quarterback, you're not going to win. So, I mean, from what I think they're going to do again, I think it's going to be Chase Young from what I would do. I mean, if, if all my medicals are checking out with Tua, I honestly think he's on a, a similar level as Joe Burrow in terms of a quarterback prospect. So, um, yeah, no, I would take Tua, but again, Chase Young's going to be the pick from what we know now. So, I'm just going to slide yeah. in there. 
for sure. Now, the third pick in the draft goes through the Detroit Lions. What are we thinking here for the Lions? Uh, I mean, I like cover. Uh, I like covering the corner here. I think Okuda is, is by far the the number one corner in this draft. Um, I, I think by trading with Slay and their cornerback system is just falling apart. I think I think it'd be like putting a band aid on just the, just a gushing wound. I mean, so <laughs> it's a mess, but they may just do it. I, I think that's that's kind of the move, at least in my opinion, that I think they will make. I think they will go Okuda. I personally would like to see them get a more versatile kind of guy. And Isaiah Simmons would be would be my choice if I was sitting in their spot because I think you can plug him at a lot of different positions. That's what they need. They need versatility on that defense. I, that. Um, I love Okuda, and I think he's a lockdown corner, but I think t- uh, Simmons' ability <laughs> to, to play different positions, do so many different things on the field is, is key. But I think in terms of going where I think they will pick, I think they'll take Okuda here. I mean, in terms of level of player, like whether you go Jeffrey Okuda, whether you go Isaiah Simmons, like they're going to be future all pros, future studs. Because, man, you watch their film. I mean, Okuda's got the the nicest hips I've seen in quite a while. Like the way he's able to flip back and forth. He's so smooth. He's got great feet. He's physical on the line of scrimmage. Like he's the best corner I've seen since Jalen Ramsey. And in terms of Isaiah Simmons, you got a 6'4, 235 pounder who's literally running as fast as your corner but has the strength to come off the edge. Like he does everything. So, I mean, personally here, like you got Jeff Okuda, you slot him in right next to Desmond Trufant. You let him learn. I mean, Desmond Trufant side for two years, but let's be honest, he's not your answer at corner for the foreseeable future. So, uh, yeah. you know, let, let Okuda learn under a guy like that. Nice veteran player. Uh, Okuda is going to be a number one corner in this league for a long time. I just love the fit here. So mm-hmm. I, yeah, I like for- it. For sure. Like Trufant could be the answer for like three or four games before he eventually gets hurt. And then they're going to have to slot Okuda in there to go against whoever the fuck they're going to be playing against. So I, I think that's the pick here. Okuda, is that what we're going with here? Yeah, I like it. Let's roll yeah. with it. All right. Now the fourth pick up here is the New York football giants who last year, they were up here in the top five, I believe. And they made a fault selection in selecting Daniel Jones what actually turned out to be not that bad of a decision but looked like the worst decision I have ever seen grace my eyes and, until Bill O'Brien decided to trade DeAndre Hopkins so <laughs> oh, um, it's still so fun looking at Bob you trade your uh, top three your best receiver for David Johnson a second round pick and then literally two days later a better running back just gets cut I know, fucking Todd Gurley. So coming in here at the fourth pick, the New York football Giants do not need a quarterback. Like you guys said, the Chargers could move up here to pass the Dolphins if Tua does get picked before this to get (laughs) Herbert. But I think that here the Giants are probably going to go. What are you guys thinking? I like O-Tackle, but what are you guys thinking? Oh, 100%. It's got to be a tackle here. I mean, you got to protect your franchise. You invested two top six picks in the last two years in Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones. They're your cornerstone pieces cornerstone pieces sorry Nate Solder is just not the answer so I mean bringing in a tackle here I mean we'll see what we decide on which tackle but I personally have my guy but I want to hear what you guys think like which player should go here so yeah I like Worfs um I don't want to take out of the equation though that they'll do some dumb shit like get Isaiah Simmons which is not a dumb player uh very talented but they may they may pull that shit you gotta protect your investment so don't be surprised they do some dumb shit like that but they need offensive tackle. It's it's a vital uh, a vital position they need to cover. Tristan Wirfs is my guy. Uh, I know you like uh, Wills. I like Wirfs. Um, he he is probably the best fit for for the Giants. I like him going there. I definitely yeah. don't mind it because uh, I mean personally I prefer Wills as a prospect. But at the same time, I mean uh, I can see Wills. What's it called? I can see Wirfs being the pick here simply due to his versatility because he can play inside, he can play outside, he's athletic. I mean, Gettleman's going to love – uh, okay, over under how many times you're going to hear this phrase come in draft time? Dave Gettleman loves his hog mollies. Twelve. How many times like, How many <laughs> times you hear that? If, like, if they take a tackle that pick, you're going to hear freaking NFL Network. You're going to hear freaking uh, – what's it called? NFL Network, ESPN, CBS, ESPN, they all cover it, the yeah. draft. Yeah, yeah. you're going to hear them uh, say it like every other line if they take a lineman, but yeah, no, I like Werfs. I mean, athletic lineman can play inside, can play outside. I mean, first top player, it's seamless fit here. So 
I yeah, like it. For, for sure. I'd go Worfs here, to be honest, as well. I like Worfs here. I don't think that Simmons is necessarily a bad pick, but it's not the right pick for the Giants, I don't think. Because, like, Daniel Jones, you don't want your rookie quarterback getting splat onto his ass like his name was Tony Romo every six seconds. Oh, so let's get into it. Pick five here. Me and Tyler's Miami <laughs> Dolphins here at pick five. This should be pretty clear unless you're the Dolphins and you decide to get the worst prospect here because you are the Dolphins. So to me, this is Tua 100%. Uh, see, if it was me taking it, it's Tua. But the thing is, I can just see the Dolphins falling in love with Herbert's rocket arm. I'm sorry. Like, I don't want to believe it from an outside perspective, but it just makes too much sense for the Dolphins to just fall in love with the traits guy here. Yeah, no, and, I, I can mean, see that happening as well. I just don't <laughs> want that to happen, okay? <laughs> 100%. I mean, uh, this might sound like some fabricated story, but uh, if you guys were on Austin Eckler's, uh, Austin Eckler's Twitch stream, he was talking about they were they were buffing up the right side of their line for a reason. I mean, why would the Chargers be buffing up the right side of their line if they really felt like they had a chance to get Tua? Mm-hmm. That right. makes sense. I, I think oh. Tua is the pick here, but I don't even know if he falls here. I mean, I don't know. I would pick Tua if I'm the Dolphins, though, Tyler. Oh. I 100% would take two. Yeah, as well, real but... quick, I'm I'm pretty sure Austin Eckler's like an entire year advanced because Kyle Trask comes out next year, best left-handed quarterback of all time. Love him, go Gators. Uh, no, um, I think they go Tua. I think, think they go. Herbert, you think, you th- that's you know, what I mean. Sucks. You think they go Tua, or you like you it want sucks. them to go Tua? I want them to because I think I think they go Herbert. <laughs> I think they go Herbert, and it makes me cry. <laughs> I think they go. Inside. Come on, you I, you don't like you don't like that face right there, dude. dude I mean, he's a beaut, dude. That guy's got that guy's got. He's got the lettuce. Just good looking man. Dude, he's he got threw a, great, a, a great fucking lettuce. rocket in that Twitter video, if you've seen that. Piss missile from Justin oh, yeah. Herbert. So I guess here, if we're the Dolphins, we're picking Tua. It is so clear, but the Dolphins, something's going to happen. It's going to get into their head. They're going to be thinking Herbert is the next Pat Mahomes, when in reality Herbert might be the next Johnny Manziel, and he's out of the league in like a year. So you can I'm pick sorry, Herbert. Here. I'm sorry to put it to you guys, but I mean, I just don't <laughs> see the Dolphins not taking him. Yeah. It's going it's to wanna... make Tyler's decision way easier here at six, but I just don't yeah. see them passing on Herbert. I, mean, uh-huh. I just, I just want to put this out in the open. I think, I think this one through five will not be chalked by draft day by the time these not. picks are made. And someone's jumping up, and it's going to completely skew everything we're doing here. Uh, well, it's going to be the Chargers. Chance, there's a great chance someone jumps up in the top four, and they take Tua, and the Dolphins go ahead and just take Herbert anyways. So – yeah, We don't know what could happen, but mm-hmm. definitely. For sure. Now, after the Dolphins picked at five, the no Los player. Angeles Superchargers are here at pick number six. This should be as clear as it gets, Tyler. No, they, they do. They want to roll with Tyrod, so I'm definitely going to go running back here. No, I'm joking. Uh, they're going to go to a they – can, they can pull this bullshit like they're actually going to stick with Tyrod Taylor. No one sticks with Tyrod Taylor. Even when he was the best Cleveland quarterback – they even went with Baker. Like, what a joke. Poor Tyrod Taylor. Rip him. Uh, they're going to go to it here. Yeah, 100%. 100%. I mean, it's a no-brainer. I mean, what if I accidentally clicked on someone else again? <laughs> it's <laughs> all good here. remember that yesterday? <laughs> yeah. This stupid app doesn't let you revert a pick, which is dumb, but – Whatever. Yeah, no, you got to become the to you got to pay to be an expert for that. So coming in here, I pick number seven. We have the Carolina Panthers with their new coach, Mr. Matty Rule here of the Carolina Panthers. I pick number seven. Where do you think they're going? This is gonna be. This, pick, there's you know? a big chance we may all have different opinions of this pick. Agreed. Because yeah, I know who I'd go. I know who my, I want too. My move is Derek Brown on the interior defense, and there we go. We start to figure out. I'm the only one with this one. Uh, I like Derek Brown a lot. This guy came back for his senior year, put on a fucking show, made that off Auburn defensive line just absolutely feared. He was the best part of that defensive line. There was a lot of other guys that were that were great pieces like Nick Coe, but I mean, this guy's a monster, and he's going to provide immediate effect for the Panthers. I love this, and I love Isaiah Simmons as well. I feel like you're going to jump into him, though, Danny. It's definitely got to be Simmons here. I mean, yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. You, you, Luke Keekley retires in the offseason. You have no absolute – you have nothing going on in the back end of your defense, nothing going on in your linebacker position. Uh, what, what do they have? They lost Bradbury in free agency, and they lost uh, Luke Keekley. Well, Luke Keekley and, and Isaiah Simmons are not similar linebackers at all. Not even close, but, I mean, you have you have Shaq Thompson and nothing fucking else at your linebacker position. You don't need to be exactly Luke Keekley to help at the linebacker position. 
the guy like Isaiah Simmons, you could play on the back end. You could play at the linebacker position. He could cover the slot. He's such a versatile piece. If you have so many holes in your defense, why not get a guy who can plug anything you need him to? Like, I, I feel like Matt Rule's the type of coach to be able to really uh, – I, I mean, I, again, I got to do my research. I'm not 100% sure uh, in terms of the de- defensive coordinator what type of scheme he really wants to run uh, at the next level. But I say Simmons can do it all, and that's what yeah. I know. If you know football, I mean, you watch him. He's fucking out there guarding your fastest receiver. Next play, he's fucking rushing the passer. Next play, he's co- covering the middle of the field on a fucking zone. Like, he – like, that national championship game alone, this guy was doing everything. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I think it's a no-brainer here. Isaiah Simmons on the board at seven. He's here. Like, you have to take him. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I mean, every fucking f- expert here, they tell you, the draft analyst, they say, oh, the Swiss Army knife, Isaiah Simmons. That's what everyone fucking calls him because he's good on all parts of defense. So I like Isaiah Simmons here. That's the clear pick for me. Tyler is a dumbass. Agreed. Pick Isaiah Simmons. <laughs> no, hey, whoa. I don't, I don't want to give this perspective that I don't like Isaiah Simmons here. I, I really do like the move. I just think Derek Brown's a really, really great prospect. And and, and more or less where I think Carolina may, may go. I mean, Matt Rule's not too familiar with the with the system. I was just more pushing for Derek Brown. I kind of figured the pick, though, was going to be Isaiah Simmons. Just wanted to give my light case out there. Yeah, no, it's, it's all good. So coming in here at number eight after the Carolina Panthers select Isaiah Simmons is the Arizona Cardinals, more like the Arizona Robbers because they, like we said, they did an absolute heist of the Houston Texans taking DeAndre Hopkins. So now they're not going to draft the wide receiver. Some people thought maybe they would take a wide receiver now. 0% shot. The Arizona Cardinals are up now. Danny, I believe it is your pick here. I mean, this is a no-brainer for me. My top-ranked tackles here. You, got, you get Mekhi back then. I mean, he's an absolute mammoth He's six seven, three hundred seventy pounds, and like when you think, oh, a guy that big, he can't move. No, this guy is like the most athletic fucking human honker truck you've ever seen. Like flat out. Like this guy's feet are amazing. I mean, he's got to work on his technique, obviously, but like there's just no way you can overlook his potential here. I mean, especially in a Cliff Kingsbury offense, you protect Kyler, that you have your number one receiver, you get rid of DJ's massive contract. I mean. Mackay Becton here, protect your franchise. You don't need your receiver as much now, obviously, with Hopkins. Like, I think it's a no-brainer, but I want to hear what you guys think here. Yeah, Tyler, you can go. I have Wills as my number two offensive tackle, so in my eyes, I would go Wills here uh, at Arizona. But uh, Becton's right on his right on his heels, so I, I don't disagree with, with Danny's choice here at the pick. Um, by how we're kind of doing this, it is Danny's uh, choice to, to make this decision, so – uh, I would definitely be okay with Makai Becton here following with Arizona. Yeah, they're definitely both pretty close. I, li- I like Becton better as well, just based on what I have seen. Now, I'm, I don't go super deep into the draft like you two do, but I think Becton is the answer based on what I have seen. But I don't see a problem with going Wills either. So, I mean, Will, again, Will, Wills is my second-ranked tackle. I have Becton one, I have Wills two. Like, they're neck-to-neck. Neck. Like, the top four tackles in this draft are honestly so close. Like, you cannot go wrong. Unless you're trying to throw Josh Jones ahead of one of them, then I'm going to fucking fight you on it. But, uh, yeah, no, uh, to me here, I mean, Becton's my number one. But, again, Wills, even uh, Andrew Thomas is on the board here. Like, either one of those guys would also be fantastic picks. So, I mean, you can't go wrong. But, personally, here, Becton's my number one. So, I'm going to slot him in. Okay. So, the Arizona Cardinals go with Makai Becton, offensive tackle out of Louisville. Now, number nine, Duval. The Jacksonville Jaguars are up to pick. Now, they have lost – my main man, Big Dick Nick Foles. It is very sad for us Big Dick Nick truthers who think he's better than Carson Wentz. I still believe that. But up here at number nine, where do you guys think the Jacksonville Jaguars are going here? I know who I got, but I want to hear what you guys are saying. Well, I'm making the uh, – I technically get to make the pick here. So, uh, I'm going Derek Brown. I They got to go defense. There's no way in hell they don't. Uh, a lot of people are, like, trying to get, get corners to them. Uh, I, I just, I think Derek Brown, I think in, they're in a situation where it's best player available on the defensive end. And I think by far, I will, I'll take Derek Brown over the next best corner, which is in my opinion, Bolton and Henderson. So I'll take Brown over, over both of them. Yeah, I can agree with that. I don't understand why it even says their team needs is a wide receiver. They have some solid wide receivers there, and their defense is by far the biggest hole I have ever seen in my life, unless you're on one of those hubs. So Danny, what are you thinking? I mean, yeah, I definitely like the uh, Derek Brown pick. I could see, like, personally, I can see them taking Henderson here just be, just to get the traits guy, especially with losing Ramsey. But, I mean, personally, like, 
Derek Brown is so hard to pass up here, so I, I don't see them passing him up. I mean, he's such a disruptive force inside. I mean, you watch that guy fucking move around. Like, he didn't run well at the combine, but if you're actually evaluating a, a fucking defensive nose tackles combine as your proof, oh, he's not a good player because he didn't run a good fucking 10 yards. Get the fuck out of here. Watch him fucking absolutely smash a center in his goddamn face to actually know your analysis. So, I mean, Derek Brown's a fantastic player. Getting him at nine here, good value. So, I like the pick. So, yeah, go Derek Brown here. All right. Now, after the Jacksonville Jaguars go with Derek Brown, interior defensive lineman out of Auburn, pick number 10 here is the Cleveland Browns. Will they fuck up a top 10 overall pick again? Likely. Where do you guys see the Cleveland Browns going here at number 10? I think it may be my pick, but. What do you guys think at first? What do you got? I'm thinking Andrew Thomas, to be honest with you, out of Georgia. Easy. I mean, I love Jedrick Wills, but he's a right tackle. They just signed Jack Conklin in free agency. You have a hole on your left side. Andrew Thomas can seamlessly fit in there. So, I mean, I think he's the pick. Even though I have Jedrick Wills rated higher, I think Andrew Thomas is a better fit as the left side tackle. Mm -hmm. And Jack Conklin is one of the best right tackles in the game, so you're not going to move one of him or Wills to the left side. So, I, I mean, I think Andrew Thomas is a better fit. Okay, Tyler, you made like a weird face. What are you thinking here? Yeah, well, that was, that was off of officials. No, no, I'm, I, I, I was thinking you guys were going to say, Wells. Uh, no, Andrew Thomas is my pick. Uh, I do think they need to cover quarterback because their quarterback's a clown. He needs to just be a commercial man instead of an actual NFL quarterback. But so uh, talented, though, man. <laughs> Dude, Andrew, Andrew Thomas is my pick. Too. Yeah. I mean, have you seen the man run away from the cops? He's got that speed. Pick Andrew Thomas. Here. I like it. All right, now at number 11, a poverty franchise, I should say. The New York football Jets coming up here at number 11. I know the Jets fans in the comments, they might be pissed off chanting J-E-T-S to win four fucking games this season. <laughs> 11, the New York football Jets are up. I don't know whose pick it is. Someone yeah, starts off. It's my yeah. pick, and I mean, like, the, the, there's going to be Jets fans in your comments saying, oh, what about C.D. Lamb? What about Henry Rugg, Jerry Judy? No. You got Sammy Darnold, who's 22 years old. He's already fucking missed games in his career. And you got no semblance of a fucking offensive line. Jedrick Wills is staring you right in the face. Top-level player in this entire draft. It's a no-brainer. I mean, I'm like, you've read my article. I'm the biggest C.D. Lamb fan that there is. But no way in fucking hell if I'm the Jets, I'm passing on Jedrick Wills. There's just no chance. There's just way too much receiver depth in this draft to pass on an elite tackle like him. Yeah, so, I mean, I can- that's my pick here. It's Wills. Yeah. 100%. I can see that happening as well. I mean, maybe Wills can prevent him from kissing some high schoolers to get mono again. So at pick 11 here, I'm liking that. What do you think of Tyler? Uh, well, since there's no way that you can draft a, a coach in the NFL draft, uh, I would definitely go Wills here too. Fuck you, Adam Gaze. Mm. Eat shit. <laughs> yeah, no, Adam Gaze is fucking garbage. So go with well, Wills here. A fucking joke, I like it. Bro, fucking clown. Okay, so after the New York football Jets select Jedrick Willis, offensive tackle out of Alabama, the Oakland, now Las Vegas Raiders are up here at number 12. I think it is Tyler's pick. Hello, I get oh, – this is once again – I feel like this is like, like maybe my third straight pick where I just have such, such a cake pick here. It's easy. so easy. Dude, C.D. Lamb, let's go. Let's go and send him over to the fucking Raiders. They got to have a name. They're going to bring in a shiny new toy when they're heading over to Las Vegas. They get, you know, a guy that, you know, is going to sell some jerseys for them because they're all a business. They don't care about their team. They're going to go C.D. Lamb here. I still think it's a good pick for them. I mean, hopefully he can stay out of that ice chamber, just like their last big name wide receiver that went there. So I like that pick as well. I mean, he's the first wide receiver coming out in the draft this year. So I like that pick there for the Raiders. Danny, you got anything on uh, Lamb? C.D. Lamb is just an absolute freak. I mean, if you want to check more, I mean, I'm sure Nick's link in the article down in the description, but it's just a fantastic, fantastic fit here. I mean, C.D. Lamb does everything you want him. You want to chuck the ball in his general area, he's coming down with it. He's so tough after the catch. I mean, he's taking anything to the house he can. Yeah, um, I honestly don't understand how anyone has anyone above Lamb. As I don't get I mean, people are going to look, oh, Judy's the best route runner in the draft, which I'm a huge Judy fan, and he's a great route runner. But, man, get me a fucking playmaker who get the ball in his hands, and he's a running back in the open field. I mean, that's all you need to be. You can learn route running. You can learn nuance once you get to the NFL. What do you think the fucking coaching is there for? Name me one receiver that, uh, other than maybe like fucking Julian Edelman, because that guy fucking sucks. But let me get, let's not fucking focus on that guy. Uh, name me like one receiver that wins solely based on his pure route running. 
you don't. I mean, Debo Samuel was a fantastic piece for the for the 49ers last year. How many actual nuanced routes you saw him run last year? No, he was getting fucking passes out of the backfield. He was getting short slant routes, short crossers. They were scheming him open. If you could mm-hmm. get the ball in a guy like CeeDee Lamb's hands, he is so explosive, so dangerous. I mean, and get, get, getting fucking Mike Mayock over here, I mean, there's no way he could pass up on a talent like that. So. Yeah, I mean, Mike Mayock's getting out as Mike Maycock out at this pick. C.D. Lamb. That was a terrible joke. But coming in here at number 13, we have the San Francisco 49ers. They have moved up here to get pick number 13. Does anyone know how they got here? Sure pick. Oh, yeah. Uh, they traded yeah. DeForest Buckner straight up for 13. Okay. All right. Should That's be, how they got here, fellas. Fun. All right, sounds good. So at number 13, it is my pick. Uh, the San Francisco 49ers were originally picking at number 31. Do they still have that pick? Still are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they still have it. The Super Bowl losers, okay? Coming in here at 13. To me, I don't know what the fuck they need. They, I don't think they need a wide receiver here. They probably need to look for someone on defense, maybe a corner because Richard Sherman is just burnt like toast. You saw what Sammy Watkins did to him. The buddy was on ice skates. And that's, that's why they lost. So besides Jimmy Garoppolo being completely terrible. So coming in here, I guess the best corner available to me, it's either Henderson or Fulton here. Does anyone think something else? I, I was actually going to add, what about a guy like Grant Delpit to add range to that secondary? Oh, that I think that'd be, be a fantastic fit for them. I mean, you got yeah. Sherman on the one side. I think you could manage on the other side. Got, uh, did they bring back Jimmy Ward? I'm pretty sure. Uh, or was it Jaquiski Tart? Either way, they, they have a box safety on the other side. You have you add Delpit, who's just the best range. Like, you can't teach his range. I mean, mm-hmm. pers- personally, I think his tackling is going to be an issue, but you you, you throw him to Kyle Shanahan, you, uh, he'll find a way to use him. I mean, let's be honest here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Grant Delpit, playmaker, add him to the back end. That defense is going to be even more scary if you want to go that direction. Uh, or this is going to – I'm not sure how you guys are going to take this, but I can honestly see this trade – being for a guy like Jerry Judy. Ooh. I mean, either or here. I mean, uh, you just add the nuanced road runner. You're losing Emmanuel Sanders in free agency. Adding that guy to compliment Debo Samuel. I can definitely see them making a trade up for there. So I think personally here, it's either going to be Grant Delphit or it's going to be Jerry Judy. I mean, that, that's my take. I mean, again, Henderson or Fulton would be a great fit too because you still need someone opposite of uh, Sherman out there. So mm-hmm, For sure. Know. Tyler, what do you what do you think of Tyler? Yeah. yeah. I like Fulton or or, uh, or Delpit. Um I'm not as big on Henderson. I'm a Gator fan, so I had to watch this fucking tool ruin ruin my life and that He LSU. just doesn't care at times. It's tough. Yeah, no, he just He's so talented, but he just doesn't care at times. Which that that we've seen just die that just kill players in the NFL. And I really I don't wish that for him, but I kind of see it happening. I like Fulton and and Delpit. Delpit, by the way, on this predicted this predicted board him at 21 is just it's a that's so shameful i have him so much higher i have him sitting in the low teens this guy's really really good i i think this is kind of the move that they're going to go with um bolton's not a bad pick either but i think delpit is my best secondary guy sitting on the board available um so i would just chalk it right to them 49ers take delpit here Okay, yeah, I'll change my opinion then for you guys. You know, two thirds oh. of the here. We'll go with Delpit here. That's honestly not that bad of a move, though, so I don't hate it. Yeah, I like it. All right, so I mean, after the. Oh, you said something, sorry. Sorry, no, no, go for it. Okay, so I was going to say, after the 49ers went with Grant Delpit safety out of LSU, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tom Brady's Tampa Bay Buccaneers, are up here at pick number 14. Are they looking O tackle here to save Brady's ass, or what are they doing? There are none left. There are none nope. worth this pick left. Okay. Realistically, you're not going to reach down the board for a Josh Jones. You're not going to reach for an Austin Jackson. Especially I, I love Ezra Cleveland in the second round. You're not going to reach for him here at 14. I mean, what I w- personally what I would do is Tom Brady's 43. And you're st- like obviously you guys know how high I am on love. I would personally take love here, simply put, because I'd have him sit behind Brady, learn behind Brady for a couple of years and be an ap- absolutely excellent starter. But I don't know if I see them doing that. Like, Bruce Arians has never, lo- has never liked young quarterbacks, plain and simple. Yeah, he always just brings an older guy in. So I, I would really? think if it was my pick, I would go with Love. Like, if I'm the Buccaneers, that's what I would do, just like you were saying. But I don't know what they're going to actually do. Tyler, you got anything on this? Tyler, yeah. I know you're going to mention Andrew Luck, but he left the next year to go to the Cardinals. What? No, what I don't was, oh, okay. Luck. I thought you were going to mention how he he filled in as the assistant coach for uh, or the interim coach uh, when Chuck Pagano got 
who was the rookie? Oh, yeah, no. Well, I was luck, actually... The next year, he ended up going to Arizona, and they traded straight for Carson Palmer. Yeah. Uh, I like I like Eason here. Not here. <sighs> Not here. Chill. Oh, like Bo- Bush, are you seeing this? Mm. No, no. I like them trading back. Was Shea Patterson like with, a, uh, with an arm? What? Shea Patterson with an arm? <laughs> what is this guy? What, we got a fucking clown here. <laughs> Dude, yeah, Eason. <laughs> <laughs> fucking a a right, fucking dude, comedian here. Go, Tyler. Wanna, we, got, we got a fucking comedian here. Now, uh, I think they trade back, and they take a guy like Eason, who will fit that offensive system so well. Give him time behind Brady, please, because it'll work so well, and I'll yeah. be happy, and I'll be a Bucks fan. I'm living in Tampa, and I'm a Dolphins fan because that organization is sad as fuck. It's like pulling for the Jets. What a joke. Give you me Jalen Hurts so, straight up over Eason. Give me, give me game up manager up Jake Fromm over Eason. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, shut the fuck up, Nick. You know, rankings. <laughs> I've, I've seen rankings that have Jake Fromm as, like, the quarterback, two quarterback, three. I'm like, what the, What are you doing? Like, come hey, on. Hey, I get my rankings uh, right from J-Love of the Rum Boys fantasy. And that kid, yeah. that kid, hey, he has, he has fucking Eason at number four. I have Eason at number four. We're full sending Eason, but it's going to be a not trade. good. <laughs> no, he is. Fuck He's you. What's good? Me. Wait, he only he looked I great in the combine because he was next to fucking Jake Fromm, buddy. Dude, okay. He blew out Fromm. He blew out Fromm in the combine. Who cares? It's the combine. Give me Jalen Hurts over both those bums. Ew, no. <laughs> Don't say that. You lost. Hurts is actually good. <laughs> no, Hurts is better than Fromm. He, he's just better than Eason, too. Oh my god, I'm gonna put you through a fucking boy. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we've just completely All right, let's make the pick. pick Fuck. Whose pick is it? Is your my pick or it's yours? It's not mine. <laughs> my pick. It's my pick. It's your my pick. pick. But so yeah, per- personally here I'm going with my QB three on the in, in the entire draft and Jordan Love, but what I think they're gonna do is uh like Man, I'm looking at Kinlaw right now, and I'm thinking of his potential fit inside with Vita Vea, and I just don't think them don't think they're gonna pass on that. I feel like they really want to delp it there and got sniped. So I mean, <laughs> we sniped ourselves. <laughs> yeah, give, give, give me Kinlaw here. I think that's what they're gonna do. I mean, okay. I actually, we'll see what you guys do first, but I I think they go Kinlaw. Yeah, no. Initially, I was thinking that, and then I'm like, well, that's a really really crowded defensive line, and, and I don't know if they'll do it. But my gosh, it's if such they a do, fit inside. Like, I mean, you got Vita Vea. You got Vita Vey, who's the absolute mammoth nose tackle, and you got Kinlaw, who's just an absolute freak of nature. They wouldn't need to touch their defensive line for a while because that would just be, oh, what a gift. What a gift to Kinlaw, getting to walk in, not having to get double teamed when he gets thrown onto like a shit team with a, with a bad defensive line. That will be awesome for him. He will be looked at as elite from the beginning just, just because he won't be getting double teamed the whole time. I love that fit. I, God, but it, it's, it's the game of what are they going to do, and – I don't know if they'll go Ken Law. I was thinking secondary for a while, but I think I think we just have to sit here and say who's the best player that they need. And in my boards, it, it's Ken Law or it's Chase on. And I think they're going to want to go interior defensive defensive line if they do do defensive line. So I go Ken Law. Yeah, yeah, we can go Ken Law here. I just don't understand why they wouldn't pick Love like realistically. Because I, what are you going to do? With I don't you? see them taking him, but. I personally would some, I would run up to the podium and get love on my roster. I think I mean, Brady, be Brady's 43 fucking years old. Like, yeah. They yeah. aren't leaving this without picking a quarterback. I think Arians has kind of learned the lesson of if you don't get your guy, you kind of get fucked. So when Brady does leave, I think he's going to want a guy with, with what it was. It would be three years. It would be into his third year uh, of, of tutorship from Arians and Brady stepping into your offense i think that would be a dream for arians to to have a guy that can just do that they don't need to worry about getting a guy next year get a guy with a loaded quarterback class now i think love sits there with their second pick though wait but the, no. don't the love is brady, off the board brady's on a two-year contract isn't he yeah yeah oh so how is he gonna get three years then no like, like the third, third year. year would be oh okay yeah no i got you i got you uh, like break. personally here it's easily lo- love for me but now I got to see where Love's going to fall because I'm looking at the next bunch of teams and who needs a quarterback? I mean, it's going to be no tough. one. Like, yeah. Other than like they, the they made three <laughs> up, let's not Let's not take away the fact that their second pick may be moved up. Uh, but no, I still think their second pick's where the quarterback starts to go. Okay. Yeah. So My go Kinlaw here, then. 
All right, so coming in here at pick 15 after the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Javion Clowney, interior defensive lineman out of South Carolina. The Denver Broncos are up. This is Tyler's pick. Did you just say Jadavion Clowney? <laughs> oh, I, I did. Jadavion Clowney has been picked. That buddy wants $20 million. He ain't getting that. Fuck that so, guy. Javon Kinlaw. My bad. Okay. Denver Broncos are up. <laughs> what a save. No, no, I think uh, I like rugs here. Uh, it's a good, good fit. it's a good fit for wide receiver. Um, I, and, and I don't really see them struggling to get it, to get rugs falling to them. I mean, this is our second wide receiver taken. We're at pick 15. I mean, we were doing mocks earlier. Now that, now that some of the teams that need wide receiver earlier on already kind of address that, uh, AK Cardinals, um, the Broncos are kind of sitting pretty here. They don't have to move this pick. They can just take their guy falling into their lap. I like Henry Ruggs here to the Broncos. I like it. Yeah, I like that as well. Honestly, I know some people might think that this might hurt Sutton in fantasy, but I think this may end up helping him. I oh, like this pick here. I love, the, I love the fit. I mean, especially, too, they're bringing in Pat Shermer, who runs 65% of his plays as passes. Uh, I mean, you've got Drew Locke, who's going to establish himself as a good second-year starter. you got Colton Sutton. Now, why don't you add in a nice speed element to your offense? I mean, Henry Ruggs would be a perfect fit here. I mean, Bush is going to be commenting on this, saying, oh, man – as much as uh, I'd want him on Tampa with those two receivers, we just can't take him because I know Bush has him as a top five overall player in this class. And, I mean, he's definitely a talented player. So, I mean, great fit. So. Yeah, 100% has to be Ruggs here. Is there anyone else that you would even think about picking here? Yeah. I mean, Judy is definitely on my Judy, mind. Yeah. I mean, the okay. fact that he's even here is pretty crazy to think about. But, you know, it's definitely Hopefully on my mind. Works. I think we just go with Ruggs here, correct? We've all gotten on to him. Yes. So, after we selected Henry Ruggs with the 15th overall pick to the Denver Broncos out of Alabama, 16 is up. The choke artists, Atlanta Falcons, are up here. I think this – whose pick is this? This is mine? It's your pick. This Which is my pick. The next pick is mine. They got rid of Desmond Trufant. Wait. Do they go corner here? Do No one's going to pick a running back this early, though, but they need a running back. I After Devontae Freeman's like, gone. This is going to sound really bold, but like, okay, I don't know. When did they pick in the second round? Because like, I know they traded one of their second round picks. I don't know when their second one is particularly, but I just, I could see them taking a guy like JT here. Like, as crazy as that sounds. I don't think it's going to happen, but I think it's a possibility. Uh-huh. But I mean, they got so many needs defensively. I mean, they ended up signing a... Who was it? They signed a big name pass rusher. Uh, they, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, was it Dante Fowler? Yes, it was Dante Fowler. Yeah, Dante Fowler. Dante Fowler. Yeah, they signed him. Uh, I mean, let's be honest. Even though they signed him, they, that defense still needs a ton of work. So, yeah. I mean, I still think they keep a defense. But, I mean, it's just a, an intriguing thing to think about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, on the defense, who are we thinking here, then? Uh, Stepdad watches these videos, so he he wants Chase on uh, from LSU, even with the Fowler sign. Um, I'm gonna piss him off though, and we're gonna go CJ Henderson because I, I think they need the cornerback fix. I'm not a huge fan of CJ Henderson, but I think as like NFL teams, yeah, what they we think they're gonna do, him. yeah, and they kind of view him above Fulton. Mm-hmm. I I would go Fulton. I would. Um, I'm not a Fulton fan at all. I think they'll go Henderson though. I okay. mean, to me, it's either Chase on or Henderson, but. I mean, Nick, it's your pick, so. It's my pick? All right, we're going to go with Henderson here, though, because they just got rid of Trufant. They probably believe in him. That's why they got rid of him, or because that guy's an old bum. So here at 16, we have selected C.J. Henderson out of the Florida Gators chomp chomp cornerback. Now at number 17, we have the Dal-ass Cowboys coming up here. Danny. Can someone pinch me? I think I'm in a dream right now looking at this board. Like, I got – Caleb on chase on who I have as a top 10 player in this entire class. And I have Jerry freaking Judy. Like, okay. I got to see what happens in the next few days. Cause I feel like if we sign Emmanuel Sanders, we're not going to take a receiver. But from what I know now, I mean, Jerry Judy's on the board. You have the chance to pair him with Amari Cooper and a Michael Gallup. Like that offense, like team 40 burger all the way. Like that again, this is, that's what I would do. I don't know what I think they would do. They would probably take Chase on because they have such a need on defense. But, I mean, I want to hear what you guys got to say. But personally, if I'm taking this pick, it's Jerry Judy. 
Yeah, no, I would go with Judy as well. I mean, his first name is Jerry. Jerry Jones is the owner of the Cowboys. So that's just a perfect fit there. Jerry and Jerry, obviously. <laughs> so that's who I would go with here. Strictly based off of that, not based off of skill or anything, just the Jerry yeah. Jerry connection. But in all honesty, I think Jerry Judy is a great wide receiver out 100%. of Alabama. I think that this is a good pick because of how stacked their wide receiver core will be. I mean, they paid Zeke a zillion dollars, so they're always going to be stuck in that. Same with Amari Cooper. But I think that this team, if they want to win right now, which is what you're going to have to do when you pay Zeke all this money, Jerry Judy is 100% the wide receiver for that. Now, while wide receivers that are rookies typically aren't amazing when they start to go into the league, I mean, last year we saw probably how many receivers that were amazing, like five. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, last year was like a real outlier because usually young receivers struggle, but Again, like I, like I mentioned, like Caleb on Chase on still a top 10 player on my board, but I'm just of the belief that if you have so many holes defensively, making your offense unstoppable is the biggest help to them. Because mm-hmm. let's be honest here. You add one piece to your defense. It's not going to change your defense overnight. You add one piece to an offense that's already going to put up 30 a game and make it even that much more unstoppable. Like a guy like Jerry Judy, like paired, paired next to those receivers would just be absolute fucking filth. But, yeah, I mean, sure. what, what I think they'll do, I think they take Chase on. What I would do, I would take Judy, even though they're, like, they're close on my board. Uh, Tyler, I want to hear what you, what you got to say because, I mean, we heard from me. We heard from Nick. So. Yeah, I want to go defense. I, I do. I, I really like Chase on still. Um, oh, I love him. The Talk fact that he got, he got past the Falcons only on the Fowler thing, which just – which, you know, it, it, coming from the perspective of we're drafting for these teams – I think they think they have that position covered. So they're going to go corner early and cover the end later. Um, so it's really unfortunate the Falcons didn't grab uh, Chase on there, which gives the Cowboys a great opportunity to go ahead and do it. Uh, I think their offense is set. Honestly, I think they need a slot. They lost Cobb to the Texans. Ugh. Bob wants but to give him almost 10 I see million Judy, a year. I see Judy as an outside receiver. I mean, I, no, he's, I just, he's 100% a hundred percent a slot for us. hundred percent. What if they just made a move to to slide up in the draft later and they get a guy like Justin Jefferson? I mean, they don't have the Cowboys. Yeah, what if they move back on this pick? I mean, I, oh, I could definitely see them moving back, but I think that if they move back, it's almost assuredly to get a second tier corner. I feel like if they move back, like say they move back to like twenty two or twenty three, like say say for example, we're in this scenario right now. Jordan Love is on the board. New England wants to come up for him. I would trade back to 23, take New England's second round pick, give them back a fourth, and then I'm, st- I'm still taking a corner like Gladney that I like, like Fulton that I like. So, I mean, I think a trade back scenario would definitely be for a secondary member. I feel like if they stay at this pick, it, it would either be one of these two guys. I just like the perspective of them trading back more than anything else. But oh, you know, I if don't. We had the, if we had the premium, it's definitely an option. <laughs> Where's but. Bush? No, um, I like uh, I like Judy here. I, it's your pick, so I, I definitely can roll with that. Um, I like Chase on too. Uh, I don't mind. I don't mind the Judy pick though. Yeah. I want to hear. So you take Chase on Judy? Like if you? Uh, I would go Chase on. It's your pick yeah. though, so. Um, yeah. No, I, I just want to see what you and Nick do because like I, I'm fifty yeah. fifty between either of them. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. I think just going with that, like, offensive pure power, like you said, and get Judy would just make them unreal. Their offense is already very, very good compared to what pe- most people think. Most people think Dak is a bum or something, and then Dan will go oh, defeat you God. on Twitter. He'll go slay you down with good. facts and knowledge. Like, his name is Ben Shapiro. He'll throw that shit onto you. So, I like Judy here to make the Dallas offense probably one of the best offenses in the league. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's do it then. I'm hyped. Fuck it. We'll do it live now. The Cowboys have selected Jerry Judy, wide receiver out of Alabama, and me and Tyler's Miami Dolphins. We're back again into the first round here, and then we pick again later at pick number 26 here. The Miami Dolphins are on the board after getting Justin Herbert, the pervert, the option that we did not personally want, or I would not want. I'd rather have Tua, but that's just what the Dolphins are going to do because the Dolphins are going to Dolphins. So here we go at number 18. Whose pick is this? Tyler. I'm Tyler's. very excited for this pick. I'm very excited. Uh, I know so it is. I really love the stack of getting two other than getting Judy. Those 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 stocks are awesome. I would take both of those. Those stacks are nice. Um, but in the circumstance where they took Herbert and Chase on is sitting on the board, yeah, Judy I was about would have to. Say to. That. You if have I'm to the, take Chase on here. If I'm the Dolphins and I would, and the Cowboys don't move and they're sitting here, clearly they'll go. What is it, Judy or, or Chase on? You're just sitting. You're just gonna. You're just gonna pick who they don't pick. 
and, yeah. and Chase on sitting here is gorgeous. I mean, they added a lot to the right now. You're that, fucking, you're fucking eating popcorn by the Cowboys. Big saying, oh, oh, I don't care what the hell you do. I'm getting a guy that I love here. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. uh, they added a lot to their to their defensive line. I will give them that. Um, they they added a lot of pieces to the point where they could just start drafting only offense, and and I would be very much okay with it. But Chase on's just different, and, and Chase on can Chase on. There's a chance he he could take over as the best guy on that that off the the, the defensive Defense. line. Um, by like halfway through the season, even with Shaq Lawson there, I mean, he could turn their defensive line to something scary. A lot of people are kind of saying the Dolphins are kind of building like the 49ers. And I think, you know, in, in that kind of, uh, in that kind of wavelength, I would say they go chase on here to help. Their Y'all got so much nice draft capital this year. You guys got a really, a really, really good corner duo. I mean, adding an extra pass rusher, like chase on, to what you got going on. I mean, I really like what the Dolphins are doing from a real build perspective. Brian Flores, I feel like, is super underrated because he could have honestly gotten some coach of the year nods last year. Like, he took probably one of the worst rosters I've seen in quite a while and got five wins out of that. Not wrong. That's, I mean, they were that's crazy. Yeah, and then the Jets beat them and carried their fucking kicker off the field. What a bunch of pussies. Who does that? <laughs> Honestly, the Dolphins should have won that Jets. game. No, uh, poverty no franchise. Let the Jets fall down in the draft. They're fucking idiots. They'll always stay around the 10-11 because they're stupid. They're fucking See. morons. Jets suck. J-E-T-S. Go fuck yourself. You'll never win more than eight games. Fuck if, you. Shout Jason, out Fireman Ed. Keep going. If Jason Garrett wasn't such an asshole and had to win his last sending off game, the Cowboys would have picked in the top 13. So, uh, yeah, no, he, he just had to finish his tenure at eight and eight for us. So yeah. that, that's fitting in. But yeah, Honestly, no, I feel like if I'm the Dolphins here, Chase on is the guy. Yeah, he is the pick here. If only there was an offensive tackle better than Josh Jones here, though, because maybe God. you could do that. But obviously no one's going to be there. So it's Chase on here out of well, LSU. I believe and, it's your pick, uh, Nick. Uh, it's my pick here now. So after that, that my Dolphins and Tyler's Dolphins selected – Chase on here, edge rusher out of LSU. The Las Vegas Raiders are back yet again after selecting CeeDee Lamb in pick 12. So it is my pick here. We already have a wide receiver. It says that we need two wide receivers here, but they're both crossed out, so it's okay. So here, according to the website, they need a quarter and interior defensive lineman, safety, cornerback. Pretty much they need fucking everything. They might need a new quarterback as well because I don't believe in either of the quarterbacks that they have there. But I don't see them picking a quarterback here. I don't think they would pick Love. I want to. I want to drop a, a quick tear here. One little shed, um, because if if somehow Chase on got to them at eighteen, oh sorry, at nineteen, they would make the pick in like ten seconds. They would write it on the card 100%. and they'd send it up. It wouldn't even. It would be it's like nine play. minutes on the clock, and that pick would be made. It, it, that is. Uh, I really like Chase on going there because their defensive line is just. Uh, uh, well, but no, they they got good edge rushers. I mean the the Raiders got good edge rushers. They got Max Crosby. They took Cleveland Farrell fourth overall, and they just signed uh who they signed. They signed uh Carl Massive from uh Denver the Browns. Bay, three years, twenty five oh. million. The Browns. Oh, yeah, he got drafted by the Browns, and then he ended up getting cut. He went to the box. He ended up becoming a really good, really good starter for them. Got a three year, twenty five million dollar deal from the Raiders. So I just, I mean. Best player available tactic, you take a guy like Chase on, but they, they invest a lot of resources into the defense of the live recently. So. Uh-huh. so right here, what I'm looking at here, it's my pick, but you guys can obviously talk about it. I'd go Fulton probably here. What are you guys thinking? It's between guy, two guys for me. It's either Fulton or if you really – if you believe that they're going to go quarterback. I mean, Love is just such a talented player. If you don't believe Derek Carr is the answer – and like personally here, I'm taking Love because I just simply think he's such a talented player. Have him sit a year behind Carr – Learn your system. I mean, he could, he has all the traits you're looking for, and he's not, you know, a complete total dickhead like fucking some guys like Tyler Moss likes over here and Jacob Eason. Oh, hell uh, yeah, baby. That guy's a fucking airhead. Dude, yeah, I mean, yeah. but he's too busy, too busy fucking uh, smoke, smoking fucking bulls and riding waves over there to fucking. Dude, guy's a fucking god. Don't, don't bash my boy Eason. <laughs> I mean, if they don't take love here, then the Patriots are going to get get him. So I think just to block the Patriots, I think we may have to select Jordan Love here. I fuck the Patriots. <laughs> I don't want no more rain of fucking Bill That's Belichick true. looking at me like that. So Gruden's I think we should go look love at here. the traits. Gruden's going to look at the traits. You know what? This is a big time quarterback. <laughs> Didn't play with a lot in college, but you know what? The guy's got a good arm. He's got the traits. 
You know, let's have him sit, uh, sit a year before, behind our boy Derek. And, uh, you know, this guy can really pick it up for the next year on, eh? Yeah, he really will say A at the end there. All right, so we're going to go with Jordan Love, I think. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Oh, my gosh. All yeah, right, I- Jordan Love, quarterback out of Utah State, has been selected by the newly found Las Vegas Raiders. Sadly, they will not be able to draft in Las Vegas. I don't think they will. It'll probably be some remote bullshit. They won't get to ride the boat into the fountain, which would have been sick, to be honest with you. They need to bring it back there next year. I want to see that. So at number 20, Duval, the Jacksonville Jaguars, are back yet again for the second time in the first round. Last time they selected who? Into who did they pick? Uh, Jaguars, they took – let me just – Interior defensive lineman. Yeah, they took Derek Brown. Yeah, yeah. Derek Brown a, with their, like, eighth pick or something here. So, the Jaguars are up yet again. Who's picking it here? My pick? Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is a no-brainer. Just look at the top of the board. You, yeah, you, you, you fanboy of Gladney. I mean, I personally <laughs> would go Gladney. I personally would go Gladney. But what do I think they're going to do? I think they're going to take Bolton. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm going to be, I'm gonna be uh, unbiased when I'm making these picks. I mean – Either way, you're, you have to go corner here, simply put. You traded your best defensive player at the midway point of last season. You have absolutely nothing going on on that. They're trading every single defensive piece imaginable. They're flipping them like fucking hotcakes right now. Like, <laughs> Kalias Campbell landed on the Ravens for, what, a fifth-round pick? Like, Unbelievable. They're, they're just fucking selling home. I mean, really no-brainer, though. I mean, personally, I, I love Gladney. But, I mean, I like Fulton, too. I think he's a fantastic corner, so you take him here. Pick 20, settle up your secondary. I mean, I mean, I, I don't really think that's a debate there, but. Yeah, Tyler, know. did you have anything to say? Yeah, I mean, we already picked oh, no, up. no, I, I, hey, I love the pick. I, I was, I was full <laughs> sitting on Fulton. Um, I have him above uh, Henderson in my mind, mainly because I just hate all cornerbacks that come out of Florida because they make me sad and don't win me national championships. So, no, I, I like the pick there. I this, think, I think, oh, sorry. Uh, I was going to say this, this just in, sorry, I'm going to say it. This just in, the cool. Cowboys picked up. Ha ha, Clinton Dix, safety. Actually? Oh, it's just in. Yeah, I just got the alert. So it's a good thing we didn't pick anyone a safety for the Cowboys. They selected Jerry Judy. So obviously this happened at 1230 in the fucking morning. So who could have expected <laughs> ha ha, Clinton Dix to get picked up at 1230 in the morning? But that is what just happened. Coming up here at 20, the Jacksonville Jaguars selected Fulton, cornerback out of LSU. And at number 21, we have the garbage ass Phil Idelphia Eagles with their first pick in the draft right here. To me, they have to go Eason because Carson Wentz is garbage. What do you guys think? Receiver. Receiver. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, Ooh. like I, I'm taking Justin Jefferson here all the way. I just think he's the best fit of the guys left. Like I personally have regular higher on my board. I just see that Justin Jefferson being a better fit in their offense. You know, uh, Justin Jefferson is a great route runner, great slot receiver. So, I mean, I know Tyler loves uh, Justin Jefferson as well. And Nick, I know you do too, so. I mean, I want to hear what you guys got to say, but I have I, I know who I'd take here. I'm take actually here. probably the biggest Justin Jefferson guy because I don't even watch too much tape, but I just came watching him in the national championship. So he was my wide receiver one. So you can go, Tyler. You, you just hear the you just watched the video of him doing the get the guy and you just instantly fall in love, eh? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right there. <laughs> go, Tyler. Uh McKinney. I'm I am full setting this one because Malcolm Jenkins left. They need secondary help. <sighs> They need it. They need secondary help. Give them McKinney. Just I, I get the wide receiver stuff, but I don't see the Eagles taking a wide receiver in, in the first round. I, I, yeah. I see them taking a guy like McKinney He's sitting here almost at the top of the board. Fuck DeAndre Swift for a second. I think they take the, um, the surefire uh, uh, safety. Words are hard today, boys. Um, Xavier McKinney is, is my pick here for the Eagles. I mean, okay. I mean, I don't want that, but. <laughs> I mean, I'm taking well, Justin Jefferson 100% this of the time is, here. This is my move. I just, I oh, get your pick? the wide receiver oh, okay. move. I do. I, and no, isn't I it, want uh, them to as it? well. No, it's I his pick. Oh, okay. I, it's just, it's a perspective of I don't Fuck. see them doing it. I would love to draft a wide receiver here. I would, but I don't think they're going to do it. And, and that's kind of my built perspective. I think they're going to go McKinney. They're going to go secondary. It's needed. They'll take him and we'll kind of be sad because we want to see uh, King Wentz throw it to actual wide receivers that can catch a fucking football. But I think they take him in the second round and they go McKinney here. They lock up their, their secondary. It's, it's so bold. The hit, first of all, the hit rate of rookie receivers in general, like especially past the first day, it's just so low, like in their rookie years. And Wentz has absolutely nothing going on in that passing game. 
Like, realistically yeah. here, their receivers are absolute fucking dog shit. You're talking about fucking Greg Ward being their wide receiver one at the end of last year. Like, I'm a Cowboys fan. I'm going to defend Dak, but, man, like, I got to give him some credit. He was thrown to some complete garbage at times last year. And I this, this is what I got I to gotta talk, talk with you about because I just – I can't see them passing up on an alpha receiver here. I mean, let's be honest here. What did I, what did freaking J.J. or Sega Whiteside prove at all last year? Absolutely Nothing. fuck all. I mean, he was a sec- he, he was a high draft pick, okay, but he did nothing. You have abs- like Alshon Jeffrey doesn't want to be there. Greg Ward was your number one receiver at times last year. Like, I just don't see any scenario they walk past twenty one and say, "Oh, you know what? We can't. We're, we're going to take a safety instead of this wide receiver." By the way, not just any wide receiver. I fully believe in Justin Jefferson. I mean, I respect the pick. I think McKinney is a fantastic player. Like, I'm not disrespecting it by any means. But I just like I. I'm going to make my case. I just think there's no way from a Cowboys fan, especially like it pains me to say, this is no way they can pass on a receiver here. I, I mean, if they don't pick a wide receiver, Carson Wentz is going to go hang himself in the bathroom. The second they pick McKinney, because this is yeah. just unbelievable. They, he literally has no one to pass to Alshon is 100% out of there. He hates fucking Carson Wentz. Zach Ertz is getting a bit up there. At age. Zach Ertz is their best wide receiver right now. And, he's oh, and, and their second, their second best receiver is their fucking backup tight end. Dallas Godert, baby. <laughs> this class is just different, though. It's not that the receivers stop after Jefferson. That's why I wanted to go and get an elite secondary now. There's still really good wide receivers they can find in the second round. T. Higgins is just an example. Oh, I love T. Higgins. Stop. Stop <laughs> with that. T. Higgins Wait. is a good wide receiver. And if he's if you get a 6'4", big man wide receiver going what? your outside. So get, get, get Alshon Jeffrey Jr. Get young Alshon. Okay. Why not? Yeah, well, we, <laughs> yeah, how did that work out? <laughs> Pretty good. He's still there. <laughs> uh, they want a Super I, Bowl. I look at it the opposite way. I just think like you can get a guy like Antoine Winfield in the second round. You can get a guy like Cal Duggar. You can get a guy like Jeremy Chin, J.R. Reed. Like there's so many decent safeties that you can just plug in. I love McKinney. I think he's a fantastic player. He can play in the box. He has range to play out wide. Uh, sorry, deep. He can cover out wide. But I just I. I'm going to have to argue with you here. I just don't think, see any way they pass on a receiver. See, my thing is, is I think you're saying decent cornerbacks. I just want to get the best. I, I want to get one of the, what in my opinion, is what, like the, the second best safety. Why not? I, I, think, I think you'll find better wide receivers lower than you'll find better cornerbacks. So uh, I, I feel like in this situation, I, I'm going with McKinney at my 21. Yeah, just, I just mean, you pick made, them. It's you sound, yeah, you sound like you made your pick, so I'm going to respect it, but I, 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 I got to disagree hard. there. Yeah, I mean, uh, after that pick has been put in, Carson Wentz has now got the rope out. So Yeah, he's, he's, he's about to like – He's about to fucking off himself here. So at 21, Xavier McKinney, safety out of Alabama, has been selected. So at number two, 22, we have the Skull Minnesota Vikings here. At number 22, recently just got rid of – Stefan Diggs. So, do they try to find Stefan Diggs' replacement here? Maybe. Not no. here. Not here. Not yeah. yeah. You have to take a secondary piece. They lost both their starting corners from last year. They lost Trey Wayne to the Bengals and Xavier Rhodes got cut. You have absolutely no corners right now. Like, nothing. Mm-hmm. Like, if they don't take Gladney here, like, th- th- I don't even know what to say because this is the most sure pick I've been about in quite a yeah, while. This is, this is locked for me. Gladney's. Yeah. Gladney. Eh. I feel like he he just he just falls out of my my Fulton and Henderson tier, but he's he's right there at the next guy coming up, and, and I think this is a great fit for Minnesota to to get a cornerback. It's hard for me to think they're going to go anywhere else. I mean, they're they're a dedicated run team. I don't really see them getting a wide receiver yet. Not spending first round capital on one, at least is what I'm saying. But uh, the Gladney's the the Gladney's the pick here. Yeah, I have sure. Gladney as my cornerback number two. That's how much I believe in him. Okay, so I mean, last year, I mean, they had Rhodes, but they really didn't have Rhodes because that man's a fucking garbage can now. He's washed up. I mean, he's Devontae Adams' son at this point. He can't even hold Devontae Adams' jock strap. So let's pick Jeff Gladney here out of TCU. Did they have Rhodes or Highway last year? <laughs> like, fuck. Yeah, the fucking everybody, interstate. Everybody was driving it on him. All right, fucking let's hear. We'll go with the Jeff Gladney corner out of TCU for the Minnesota. Vikings and coming up at number 23 we have the worst franchise in the NFL the most hated franchise probably the best franchise in the NFL the most hated franchise in the NFL the New England Deflatriots at 23 this is such a Patriots pick here I mean you got literally a guy I comp to Trey Flowers sitting uh, sitting on the board here for you I mean 
I know you guys love him too. I just look at this guy right here, AJ Epineza. Fantastic player, great hands, powerful. Like he does, you don't need a true edge bender when you're running a three four multiple front like the Patriots do. They they make these guys and turn them into stars. Look at Trey Flowers. Like Trey Flowers was fantastic for them. He he was. Like, I, I'm not gonna gush over him. I mean, followed Patricia over to Detroit, but. Man, like, I just feel like A.J. Epineza can play that Trey Flowers role in this defense. He's so underrated. Like, obviously, the metrics aren't going to match up for him simply because he's not as athletic as you like. But turn on some Iowa film, and, man, like, this guy's punch is just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, no, he's he's a rotational guy uh, for sure, but that's a New England kind of style. Uh, I love this pick. I've loved this pick for a while. Epineza is a great fit for New England. Um, even with their quarterback uh, situation, Stidham's a god, uh, at least in my eyes in this first round. If you're sitting here, you got to pretend like he, like your quarterback position is locked up. Swallow your, uh, swallow your pride for a second. Grab an excellent edge rush here. Uh, worry about quarterback later on in the draft. I agree with that. So let's yeah, go, I mean, go with him. I was going to ask Tyler where the fuck Eason went on his board because since he's like sucking him off before. But I hey, mean, fuck Eason. Hey. Garbage. Watch it. <laughs> Makes me fucking he's, he's, sick. He's going with my next pick here. <laughs> I'm going to okay. piss off Danny again. and I'm gonna oh, go You're going to make me sick. sick. <laughs> All right. So at 23, the New England Deflatriots select AJ Epinesa, edge rusher out of Iowa. Coming in here at number 24, we have the New Orleans Saints, the absolute son of the next pick, the Vikings. So let's see who they go with here. Whose pick is it? Is Thank it mine? Thank you, Danny. I appreciate you highlighting it. I'm not going to fight you on this one because I'm going to full send this pick. This is who I love the Saints going with. Justin Jefferson, if he's here, go ahead and send him on over to, uh, to New Orleans. Make him take, what, that hour-long drive. Go over to NOLA. Go be a Drew Brees wide receiver. You're basically his favorite target already. Michael Thomas and him are, are very similar in, in how they function as wide receivers. I think it's a great fit for him. Uh, Drew Brees, is they're, they're in win-now mode. You get, a, you get a wide receiver like Jefferson, you, you'll be ready to win now. I was only about to mention that. I mean, you're literally getting another Michael Thomas when you're bringing Justin Jefferson. And oh, he, yeah. he tested way better than I had him. Like he, 4 4 3 at his play style, I don't, like what he did on film, like that just boosted his stock completely because I did not see a guy with burning speed like that would indicate. I mean, well, yeah, you wouldn't see it in film. The, I mean, you wouldn't. That's just not he, his play style. He wins. With good hands, with great routes, mm-hmm. and now that he has four four three added to that, like that, I don't know. I just think he's a great fit here. I mean, you pair him next to Michael Thomas, big steady targets. Like Drew Brees is loving it. Yeah, this is a wet dream for if you're a Saints fan right here. Can I say this real quick? Drew Brees is going to be a relevant fantasy quarterback if they get if they get Jefferson because this even is, without he was good last year. Yeah, what? <laughs> no, but he's. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't play in super flex leagues. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to get my to get my uh, super flex league virginity taken from me. Um, but no, in, in my regular leagues, he's a rotational style quarterback. Uh, in he, about he fin- I think he finished top five in points per game last year. Like he no, he did. He was literally played. god, but he only really played like god. eight games or something. <laughs> Yeah. No, but Justin, no, he was, what is it? Jefferson's only going to increase that, though. That, that's, that's oh, 100. Kind of but I'm point. saying, even if they don't get Jefferson, I feel like he's still going to be a top 12 option. If they get Jefferson, he has all the upside in the world, man. Yeah, for sure, 100. percent I 100 percent agree with that. So yeah, you, I mean, you have to go Jefferson here. There's really no other pick. Sure. Yes, lock in Justin Jefferson. So coming in here at number 25, like I said, this is the Saints' father. The Vikings. I mean, their actual father, Stefan Diggs, is gone now. So we're at 25. We selected cornerback Jeff Gladney out of TCU last time. What are we looking at here for the Minnesota Vikings? Your pick. Oh, it is my pick here. Okay, never mind. So do you, I don't know if they would go wide receiver here, even though I think they want a wide receiver. I think they might need more players on defense. I was going to say tackle. Correct. Tackle? You think they go Josh Jones? I can see Josh Jones here 100%. Or if they want to go interior, you got a guy like Cesar Ruiz here. I can definitely see that. Would you hate me if I said my next best corner goes to them and they just stack? I mean, and they go two rookie corners in the first round. Because I wouldn't hate I, it because they have such a hole at corner. It depends who you're mocking here, though. I like AJ Terrell from Clemson. I don't a mind him. Pick. I mean, he's definitely in the next group. 
he 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 comes um there's a tear break but he does come after gladney um i trayvon Diggs is is still pretty good but i like i like terrell as as the next best corner i don't i'm not gonna go there but i do like the perspective of them maybe taking uh two corners there uh it's it's an interesting take um they may do it with how weak that that position is for them but no i'm looking offensive line uh, ideally, I, I like uh, I like Josh Jones here. Yeah, I like Josh yeah. Jones here. It's a good fit. So yeah, we'll go with Jones here. Josh Jones out of Houston. So after the Minnesota Vikings select Josh Jones, the Miami Dolphins are back again, third time in the first round. Unless they somehow try to trade up to get Tua, which may or may not happen because they're stupid and they believe Justin Herbert is better. So at number twenty six, the Miami Dolphins are up here. We already have Herbert, and we already have who else? And uh, we have Chase on. So. Coming in here at number 26, what do you guys think the Dolphins are looking for? Oh, what do I think? Hmm. That's a good – I mean, good, uh... I personally would take my next best tackle here. Now, but looking on the board, I mean, they signed Jordan Howard. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean – I don't, I don't think they, they go running back. I don't think they go running back first round, but – I mean, I've mentioned this a few times. I mean, I think they're going to pull – the second they, they handle the quarterback situation – and Chase on was more or less that he was just sitting there and I'm like, there's no way in hell they're going to pass up on this, but I think they're going to do, and I mentioned this in so many videos because it just, it just feels so right to me that they're going to pull a 20, what, 17 Colts and they're just going to go offensive line, offensive line. You're just going to start seeing them fly off the board. And they're, they're, we're just going to, they're going to play the game of who's going to fit. You're all going to fight for the position. And if you, if you don't fit, we'll either move on from you or you'll sit as a backup. But I just feel that they may just start rapid firing out um, offensive line here. They need it almost in all positions. Uh, I don't see why they don't go offensive line, even with a reach here uh, at 26. I think they go ahead and take their first like a, one. Like a Niang? Yeah, I, I like I like Niang. Um, I don't know, there's, a, there's a few guys. Uh, Ruiz uh, on the interior. Um, okay. He he is pretty good. I mean, I just see that they have – they just need they just need players. They just need guys yeah. – uh, I would probably take Ruiz here, but I like Niang a lot too. I, I don't know. It's it's kind of a toss up for me. I want to hear you guys' thoughts. Yeah, what are you, what are you thinking, uh, Nick? Yeah, I think honestly going with the uh, offensive lineman is obviously key here. I don't really give a fuck who they pick as long as we draft someone on the line, if I'm being honest with you. As long as baby boy Herbert can stay alive, I guess, now instead of, instead of Tua. So we can go with anyone here, to be honest. I mean, the guy that I would have picked here, they had already filled that role in free agency by bringing in Kyle Van Noy. Because I personally here would would have taken wow. Zach on if they had not taken Van Noy. I mean, I just see him filling the same role, so I I just think it would be a redundant pick. And Even though I'm a I'm a huge Zach Bond fan, but I just th- I just think personally, if we're looking at it from an NFL team perspective, them sa- of signing Van Noy indicates that they're not willing to spend the draft capital on a guy like Bond here. And, so I mean, I, I feel we we'll go on ahead, really quick on the linebackers. I think they their linebacker now that they got Van Noy, it, it, it doesn't even need to be touched in this draft. Their their linebacking crew is actually probably the best part of their defense pre um pre getting uh, free agents. So I I don't see why they, they would mess with it. Yeah. Van Noy is a great pickup for them. I mean, like Zach Baum would play that Van Noy role in the sense yeah. that like you could play interior backer and then you could rush on third downs. I mean, they're they're similar players in that regard. Mm-hmm. Uh me personally here, I mean, I'm looking at it like you got a guy like Gross Matos, but again, I agree with you. I would prefer to reach on an alignment here simply. Because yeah, you got situation. your you got your supposed franchise quarterback. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Uh, what if and and just just playing uh, hypotheticals? What if uh, say Chase on was off the board and maybe they went Josh Jones? Um, they went and reached on Josh Jones. I think getting. Matos here uh, and kind of flipping where you take the edge, where you take the tackle. Uh, Matos is still a really good edge rush, but I think the Dolphins have got to, they've got to clear up that line. It's a mess. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I, I'm looking at it. Uh, I really like my boy, uh, Cesar Ruiz. I mean, Michigan boy, good interior lineman for them. I, I think they need that especially. I mean, you can't go wrong. You go tackle, you go interior line here. I mean, it depends. Like I like a couple guys later on at tackle. But I also like a couple guys. You know, I'm, I'm going to give him the end because I, I still I can still take a guy like Cushenberry. I can still take a guy like Biad, Biadish that I can take in the second, third round. So I, I feel like it might be a little bit of a reach. I mean, they're probably upset that they lost out on a guy like Josh Jones. But, again, I, I personally prefer Niang straight up to Josh Jones. That might be a bold take. But, uh, yeah, I know in terms of, like, a shock, 
I can definitely see them making this splash pick and taking a guy like Niang. So, Tyler, do you like Niang? Yeah, no, I hey him or Ruiz were, was good for me. Uh, I like, like Ezra Cleveland picks. a lot. I, I have Niang above him though. Um, so falling in line with how my rankings kind of look right now, I I like Niang as this pick. They've got to get offensive line, and I think we've we've clarified that already. So him or him or Ruiz was fine by me. I, I like Niang here. Yeah, we can pick him here. So after the Miami Dolphins select Nanyang here, offensive tackle out of TCU, the Seattle Seahawks are back up here at number 27. Not even back up. They haven't even touched the podium yet, but no one's going to touch the podium because it's going to be online. Number 27, the Seattle Seahawks are up. Whose turn is it? It's mine. It's, yeah. uh, they're, they aren't going to sign Clowney. Uh, that's not their forte to go 20 mil unless – Unless he, you know, starts breathing and is like, yeah, I'll take a one-year deal from Seattle and then go back and play edge for them. Either way, I think I like Matos here a lot. Uh, you, okay. you got him highlighted. It makes a lot of sense. Edge is something that once when they figured it out last year and Clowney started getting into the groove of things in Seattle, things started to really start clicking. Uh, that you can't, you can't go uh, a draft without getting a, an elite, an elite edge rusher. Because uh, I, I don't think they're going to get Clowney again. So yeah, Agreed. Matos is a great pick. I like it. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I think Mato's is a good, good quality player here. You get your solid edge rusher. I mean, Seattle, let's be honest here. This pick is going to come down to either if they want to get uh, an alignment or if they want to get an edge rusher. And, I mean, Matos is a clear tier above the rest of the linemen I have. So, I mean, I would oh, we can go Matos, Matos here. All right, so Matos out of Penn State, edge rusher, has been selected by the Seattle Seahawks. And coming in here at number 28, we have – the Ravens, I mean, all the running backs are available, but the Ravens have at least 30 of them on the roster already, so they're not picking a running back. What are you guys thinking here for the there's, Ravens? There's one guy in specific here that absolutely fits the Ravens to a T. And I like, I, I think Tyler might know who I'm thinking about right now, but if he's on the board, he's just such a seamless fit into that defense. But I, I, I want to see if you can guess my guy. But I'm assuming you already shouted him out in this video. It's Bond God, isn't it? No. No? Fuck. I'm assuming you've talked about him in a video of previous. I definitely have. <laughs> um, uh, well, you got LaVishka Chanel highlighted. You know damn well I like that. Uh, gosh. Let's <laughs> just take that right off. <laughs> you, like, you like that quick shout out. Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, now i got to play the guessing game. My camera's in the way, so you guys are just going to get a quick move here. All right. He- damn it. Uh, who who was who, the biggest player that they met, uh, that they lost last year, like in free agency? Are you gonna go linebacker? Are you, are you gonna go Patrick Queen? Going Kenneth Murray. Damn it! Fuck Kenneth Murray. <laughs> he's such a good fit here for them. I mean, he's a guy who can flow sideline to sideline here. I mean, I think Patrick Queen's the better uh, pass defender. I feel like he's really good in coverage. It's just he's got his inconsistencies in terms of run fits. Kenneth Murray, to me, is more, a more all-around linebacker. Better against the run. Not, not as good against the pass, but, I mean, he's definitely sufficient. I just think slam dunk pick. Ozzie Newsom's going to look at it and say, hey, Kenneth Murray, he's my type of linebacker. I mean, they, they made the bull move uh, back in two, uh, 2000, what was it, 2015? The, uh, oh, 2014, the Johnny Manziel draft when they took C.J. Mosley. Uh, oh, I can see them making a bull move again and taking a big name good linebacker and Kenneth Murray here but oh, I like well, it. it's not my, it's not my pick so I just want to uh, that's my input it's my boy Nikki boys pick uh no I, I definitely think linebackers the, the way to go uh my linebacking uh rankings are kind of a, a mess right now Patrick Queen and Kenneth Murray are kind of just they're neck to neck man it depends so what you want me. you uh, you want you want more of a zone guy you get Queen you want more of a run a run guy you get Kenneth Murray I mean they're back to back, basically on my board. I mean, you can't go wrong. But I just think Kenneth Murray's a better fit for that defense. Do you think okay. Queen was just never in a situation where he had to defend the run with how just I mean, excellent they I were? Just, covering I it? just think he's not. He doesn't have great length, and he's not able to really deflect blockers off of him quite well. He's not good in traffic. He's good. You get traffic off of him. He's able to flow sideline to sideline. He's got the athletic ability. He's got the speed to be able to do that. It's just as soon as you got him against interior runs, for example. Like, I just feel like he doesn't gr- do great against traffic, whereas Kenneth Murray is a little bit more solid in that regard. So I feel like he's a better fit in terms of the Ravens defense because, I mean, you, lo- you look, you're hoping you get the next C.J. Mosley, and obviously it's probably not going to happen, but 
I mean, what CJ Mosley was doing for that defense, and then they lost they lost that aspect of their defense tremendously. Yeah, I mean, we're, they're, we're, they're, they're great this – like, the team itself was great this year, but that – it was the offense. I mean, their defense was good. They were able to get pressure, but they didn't really have that solid linebacker. And Kenneth Murray – like obviously nobody's gonna be Isaiah Simmons in this class, but Kenneth Murray and Patrick Queen, I prefer Kenneth Murray as a fit for them. I mean, we're whacking off to the idea of linebacker. Meanwhile, Nick's over here. He gets to make the pick. He's gonna go do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, we're gonna go with J.K. Dobbins here. But on in reality, we'll just go with <laughs> Kenneth Murray here. <laughs> we love like you. it. <laughs> My Kenneth pick? Mur- yeah, Kenneth Murray, linebacker out of Oklahoma, has been selected by the Baltimore Ravens at twenty-eight, and coming in here at number twenty-nine, the team that absolutely molly whopped. The fucking Baltimore Ravens and the, the Tennessee Patriots. Kittens and the, and the Patriots. Patriots. And, and then got absolutely bent over by the Chiefs coming in here at number 29. The Titans, whose pick is it? It is Danny's. It's my pick. I mean, they franchise take Derrick Henry. So, I mean, if you were thinking possibly Jonathan Taylor or DeAndre Swift, it's not going to happen here anymore. I mean, we were speculating it beforehand, but they franchise their guy. It's not going to happen. I'm looking at a guy I mentioned earlier, seamless fit. Can rush, the, can rush off the edge, can play off ball for you. I mean, Zach Bond just seems like a Tennessee pick here. He honestly does. I mean, you yeah, run yeah. that hybrid 3-4 front. You got a guy like Zach Bond who's got the versatility to play off the edge, to play off ball. I mean, I really think it's just he'll seamlessly fit into that defense. But I want to hear what you guys think. Uh, quick shout-out real quick to uh, Max, uh, the animal, who just uh, tweeted out, uh, I'm going to miss washing my hands once Corona is gone. Fucking clown. Uh, keep washing your hands, boys and girls. You, you should be washing your hands the entire length of this video. Uh, no, I like Zach Bond here. I, I want to ask your opinion, though. Would you take Matos at 27, or would you have taken Bond? And would you be okay with the other one going to the Titans here? I mean, I think you could go either or. I think Matos is the better pure edge rusher, but I think Bond has more versatility. Now, Bond was extremely productive at Wisconsin. He, he's, this is going to sound like a weird comp because, like, it, I don't know, like, you might not have heard it. But when I look at Bond, I think of Clay Matthews. I think of how he has the ability to play off ball, but at the same time, you need him to rush off the edge. You need him to make a play. He's just such a high effort, high motor guy that has, like, his technique is underrated, first of all. At Wisconsin, they know how to fucking teach them boys how to come. Hell yeah. They're, like, their lines, D and offense, they figure it out. You want you want a safe bet, you go line from a Wisconsin team. I mean, I, I like Bond a lot. Um, I've started to get around more just by talking to you, just getting around more on him. Uh, it's a pet cat of really mine. Like, what's up? He's a pet cat of mine. I really like him. Yeah, I just I just for Matos going to Seattle makes more sense because they really oh. just need that 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 just pure edge rush. I, I still Great. like I like Bond here at, at Tennessee. I think if if that's how it falls, both teams are, are winning more than if if maybe Matos would have gone to Tennessee. I, I think this is the best way for it to work out. Uh, Bond going here to Tennessee makes a lot of sense to me too. I mean, it's definitely a really good fit. I mean, uh, either, even the Matos pick, I really like the Matos pick because you got yeah pure edge rusher that's able to come in and replace Clowney. And I don't mind it at all. I think it was a good pick. Uh, but going back to Bond here, I mean – He's got the versatility to do a bunch of things for that defense. Uh, yeah, there's not really much more to add other than I'm a really big Bond fan. So, mm-hmm. so here we're clearly going Bond. He's unanimous here. So we're going to go with Zach Bond. He's number 30 there. Zach Ma- Bond went to the Tennessee Titans edge rusher out of Wiss, Quanson. Now at number 30, we have the Chiefs heads, the Green Bay Packers, Tyler. Wide receiver. Uh, there's three in my my personal opinion. Um, they they need some weapons. I think it's at this point we're just we're we're done screaming it. I think every analyst is done screaming how much they just need someone else. Rodgers is dying. Let's get him someone. I I think. Well, I want to go Rager, and he's my number three. Um, Justin Jefferson being my number four. Uh, I want to go Rager, but again, we're playing the what what the uh, what the team will what do. They would do. And I think I think they go big bodied, and I think a guy like either Chenault or T Higgins is their move. It may not be from a from an analyst a, a move that we like, but I think in the eyes of an NFL team, they they're gonna like the big body potential, uh, big size of Chenault or T Higgins. I really want to go Rager, 
you have Mims highlighted. I just have completely blanked on him. But I was I was gonna say it like yeah, afterwards. Were, but... Dude, I could <laughs> see the name you highlighted. Fuck you. <laughs> no, you know that's a good pick too. But yeah, they go wide receiver here. Um, it is my pick. Go ahead and convince yeah. me, gentlemen. I mean, I don't even know why they need a wide receiver. They have Geronimo Allison and MVS, two absolute gods. Just kidding. Obviously, they need a fucking wide receiver. It's so funny how every analyst would, in fantasy football, boost those motherfuckers to the roof, and they were garbage, me included, though. So who are we going to go here? I mean, personally, I, like if I'm going receiver here, I'm going Mim simply because of that aspect. You're getting a big body. You're getting a, another red zone target to complement Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams, by the way, I, you don't hear it by the majority of people simply because he's such a good red zone weapon. But, man, God, how good are his fucking routes? He's such yeah. a clean possession route runner. Like, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's just I mean, unfortunate because he's in a situation where he has to be the dominant guy. And it's yeah. like, you're never going to succeed in the NFL at a, at a peak volume where we're, like, praising him in fantasy. Uh, you won't succeed as much when you're just the main focus of all defenses. Agreed. I mean, he's still, like, a top five wide receiver in the league. Oh, 100%. Yeah. He's fantastic. I mean, this pick, personally, to me, if I'm going receiver – I like a guy like Gregor. I like a guy like Mims if I'm Green Bay. But another 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 underrated uh, position I can see them really targeting here is what what are the, what about a guy like Patrick Queen? Fill out that linebacking corpse. I mean, didn't they just get rid of Blake Martinez? Isn't he linebacker? Yeah, he's garbage. He's fucking yeah. shit. Good thing he signed with the Giants. <laughs> Fuck that franchise. Uh, no, it, see, we want. I think I think we were getting lost in the sauce for a second. We want the wide receiver to go there. We want another offensive weapon. But Green yeah. Bay loves just cucking all of us, so maybe they I, do with Patrick Queen. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, again, like you've said, like the depth in this class is insane. I mean, I think we got, really got through most of the big name guys. I mean, obviously, I'm a personal huge Jalen Ragger fan. I have him as my wide receiver four overall. I know Tyler likes Great. him a lot too, and I'm oh. sure Nick does, but. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, personally here, you go, like, I would go maybe a Mims or a Riker, but I just, I think they look at a guy like Patrick Queen, they say, you know what, this is exactly what we want. We want a guy who's going to be able to have the potential to drop back, third down guy, fast sideline to sideline. I mean, Patrick Queen, again, like I said, neck and neck with Kenneth Murray for me. So, I mean, I think they would take the linebacker over the receiver here, but I, I can completely see from a different perspective that they I mean, could take a receiver. 30. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna go Patrick Queen. I, I think they're just that. It's just that's a that's an organization that's just built on let's establish a defense and, and we'll cover our asses in other positions later in the draft. Patrick Queen is is gonna be the move, and it, it hurts because I know we all want a wide receiver to go there, but it sucks. Patrick Queen. Lock it. <laughs> yeah, you can pick Patrick Queen. I mean, Alan Lazard will be a great wide receiver next year, so oh, it's okay. <laughs> you remember the hype on, like, fucking, like, Jordan yeah, Allison and then Marquez Valdez-Scantling this year? I know. That's literally what I was saying. Like, they were fucking garbage cans. They were, but it's like, is Green Bay – Is they're not going to They're not gonna make us happy. <laughs> what, the fuck? What, if they, what if they bring in Prashad Perriman? Oh, I said that, like, a million times. They need to bring in Perriman, but they haven't even talked about Perriman yet. Perriman, at all. like – I don't think they have the cap to be able to do it, but I mean, even a guy like imagine like a Robbie Anderson too, like one of those guys. Sheesh. That'd be that'd be deadly. You had you had that speed next to Devontae Adams. I mean, good luck. But <laughs> anyways, segueing back onto this mock. I mean, yeah. What are you guys thinking here? Yeah, Queen. Okay. Queen. Sad. All right. So the Green Bay Packers select Patrick Queen, linebacker out of LSU, and back yet again in the draft after they made a trade to go up earlier in the draft here. The San Francisco 49ers are up here at number 31. Who did they select earlier? Refresh my brain. Uh, they selected Grant Delpit. Grant Delpit safety. So right now, is it my pick or is it yep. Tyler's pick? It is my pick here. Pick. At, they have to pick someone. on. Uh, I think they pick a wide receiver, actually. I could see it. No, oh, I like it. No, I like I like the move. Uh, I feel like Rager's kind of like a guy that just fits them. Uh, I like that move a lot. Um, Mims is still Mims may may have already been picked. In, in all honesty, with with combine and and what he put up there, he may have already gotten himself picked in in the real NFL draft by the time this pick rolls around. But no, I, I like wide receiver. I mean, we covered we covered their defense uh, in their secondary. Um, I think the next biggest biggest fit here for them is, is 
is wide receiver. Uh, where do you guys go? I mean, I'm sitting here. I want see, to take Rieger for them. I love, I love Rieger, but I just see so many similarities with him and Debo Samuel that I would prefer, like, if I'm going receiver here. Like, Rieger, Chenault, they, I feel like they would play a similar role to Debo Samuel, which is why if I'm taking a receiver, I would prefer a guy like Mims here. And we could look at the board here just to kind of get a better visual because yes. his ranking's kind of off. I mean, yeah, I, I'm looking at it. Ayuk's kind of like a similar type of guy, Hamler. I per, I think the best fit if you're going receiver here personally would be Mims simply because you're getting that big body to complement a guy like Debo Samuel and to give, let's be honest, Jimmy Garoppolo, it's not an accurate quarterback, give him a nice catch radius to be able to throw the ball into. Would you hate if they went T. Higgins? I know you – I hate T. Higgins. He's my wider – I, I got to re- revise my rankings, but I'll be surprised if he lands within my top nine if I revise them. Like, he, like I am not a fan. Well, you know, starting to think about it, that's actually not that hard to, to oh, fall. I, I, I view him as more of a late two, early three-round type of player. Well, I, I mean, I love him to Buffalo with their, with their first pick being in the yeah. second round. I mean – Oh, it's, second round. Okay, okay, okay. The I thought, I thought you were talking about. Pick. I thought Remember you were talking that. about like when we were doing mock drafts in the past, giving them, a, uh, giving them him at twenty-two. I'm breathing a bit. I'm learning how to breathe and make sane choices, make smart choices. Now they traded away their. Uh, yeah, their yeah, to, to Minnesota. It makes sense in the second round, um, but yeah, no. Like we're saying, there's there's so many good wide receivers that falling to nine does not make Higgins horrible. Um, not at all. But with with the thirty first pick, I, I like Mims. Let's, let's I, I'd send it. I mean, it's Nick's pick. What's your thoughts, Nick's Nick? Pick. Yeah, no, we can go Mims here as well. I like Mims as well out of Baylor. I think Rieger's also very good. But like you guys said, I don't remember which one of you said it, but Rieger Maybe. and Debo pretty similar there. So we're to go with Mims. I like it. So at number 31, the San Francisco 49ers select Denzel Mims, wide receiver out of Baylor. And the final pick of the draft, well, not really of the draft, just of the first round, is the Super Bowl champions, Kansas City Chiefs here. Do they go running back? Do they decide to say, fuck you, Damian Williams? I doubt it. Do they go corner? Where are they going here? There's one position you go to here. You click that. You look at your best guys available. Personally here, I'm big fans of these guys, but I just looking at it from an NFL perspective, you got a guy like AJ Terrell, ran good. I mean, he played good for most of the year. I mean, let's be honest here. Everybody's going to criticize that national championship game. Who the hell in the country looked good against Jamar Chase this year? Absolutely fucking nobody. Like he got cooked. I'm not going to defend him. He got fucking cooked, but he is a good player. It sucks because I had Terrell in the first round before that game and, it's tough to watch, but I mean, Jamar Chase is literally fucking Julio Jones. Yeah. Like, <laughs> by the way, real quick, if you're in a league that does this and you're like, you could sit here, what, what? He's a he's a sophomore right now, right? Uh he is eligible next year. Yeah. Yeah. Go get a 2020. Go find the worst team in your league. Be like, hey, I can make it better, and send him like fucking some dog shit uh, trade for that 2020 first. Pray that you get that pick. If not, just buy all 2020 first. Because no joke, this guy. He's going to be elite from – Especially start. if you're in a super flex. If you're oh. in a super flex, you got Trevor Lawrence, you got Justin Fields, you got Jamar oh. Chase, Rondale Moore, Rashad Bateman. Like, next year's class is going to be insane. I haven't even mentioned the running backs. It was huge. Oh, like, yeah. Shuba Hubbard is, is, was huge Trav- on my board. Travis he- Etienne, Najee Harris. By the way – All was names so I know. I was so big. <laughs> I was so big at trading out of last year's draft and just picking up early picks. No matter what you're in situation-wise, there's always people that think they can win this year, even when they're dog shit. And they're like, yeah, I'll give you my 2021 for some horse shit wide receiver. You know, take it. Take picks. It's so big. And even if you don't use them all, grab picks. We completely lost track here at 32. I was going to segue into that. If you're going to talk about uh, acquiring picks and um, trading veteran players, Wait until the middle of next season when you got a fringe playoff team who maybe needs that extra running back, maybe needs that extra receiver. Target that team. Say, hey, listen, you know what? Uh, I have this specific player. Like, say you got, I don't know, fucking – give me give me a call. A random, like, say Marvin Duke, Jones. Duke comes back, say Marvin Jones comes back from the dead Go. and he's playing as a decent wide receiver too. You trade him to that team. You get their first-round pick. They don't make the playoffs. Say you end up as the 105, 107, 108. Like, you're laughing. 
Because let's be honest here. Would you rather have Marvin Jones or Rashad Bateman next year? Yeah, and obviously you're already in the playoffs. You're winning the championship because you're following my boy Nick. Nick's giving you the best advice to win championships. 100%. You're following my boy Danny. You're following me. You got Lucas on sometimes. You're following him too. So you already know you're making the chip. You already know you're fucking winning it. Now you have a, what is it, a, a mid-round, first-round pick, and you're feeling like a god because you're going to get a great player. So Yeah, I mean, if you're one of Dan- of Tyler's 54 followers, like, you're going to win. <laughs> hey, hey, dude, hey, the fantasy hey, show follows me, and he doesn't follow both of you two, so you can go eat shit, period. Because you DM'd him a photo. No, because I did a counselor here. meme. Fuck you. Let's go. 30 seconds. They're going running back. Yeah, but at least once he sees this, he'll learn to appreciate the value of Danny Football 59 mm-hmm. on Twitter. Hey, can, can you shine the bald guy's head real quick? All right, buddy, dude, we've been fucking doing this for an hour. Someone make a pick here. Okay, it's A.T. Terrell. I mean, you guys can rebuttal. I like it, too. Nick, yeah, I like Terrell. We, you're, Nick, you say running back, and I want to hear you go. Go, rant. No, I don't under I don't like Damian Williams, but if that motherfucker could somehow stay healthy, if he, he magically good. decides to stay healthy, no, play off Damian as people call him. How is he fucking play off Damian, buddy? Dame like you Dalla. could, you could put any Dolphins, you, know, you could put any running back in that 49er system unless his name was like LaShawn McCoy, and he'd be fucking good. So I mean, Darwin Thompson, people were talking about last year, was like a sixth round fantasy pick. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> Huge fucking bust on your mouth right there. But honestly, right here, you have to go corner. I mean, while I would love for the Chiefs to go running back, and then I would just nut that offense would be so good if they had a guy like JT, Jonathan Taylor, my favorite running back. Fuck DeAndre Swift. But we're going to go with A.J. Terrell here, cornerback out of Clemson, I think. What if they go Adrian, though, second round? Going to have to argue with you on that Swift versus Taylor point soon enough. But uh, well, You don't have to argue. Bit. The man's fast as fuck, okay? So let's go with uh, A.J. Terrell here. So the, what what if they go acres in the second and like oh, everyone just nuts themselves and it's well, no crazy. that's what the dolphins are doing don't tell them i hope so for acres situation but oh. for my damian williams stonk i would be very uh very upset all right so if you can just scroll down here for them you know if you want to fucking pause you can just look at the the board here scroll down danny just scroll down the draft oh, board i thought you're talking about like in the description yeah no no scroll Figure down the out. video click that goddamn subscribe button check all of their twitters out down below in the description check my twitter out because i got three thousand fucking subs 100 followers i look like a bitch on twitter thank you guys all for watching i love each and every single one of you guys make sure to tell your family that you love them because you know that's just important we have a family here i love all these guys especially the bald guy. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye, my friends. Shout out bald guy.